Find what you love and let it kill you. That's how the saying goes. But maybe don't take that literally, because some passions can be, in fact, more dangerous than others. In this video, we'll tell you the story of Amber Kornack, a young woman who was always dreamt of working with grizzly bears. But soon after her dream came true, Amber went through a nightmare that she never saw coming. She was alone in the wilderness when she was attacked by a grizzly, and all the woman could do was fight for her life. This is a story about survival. This is Fierce. It was May 17, 2018, and Amber Kornack was in the wilderness of Cabinet Mountains, Montana. She had finally achieved her lifelong dream of working with grizzlies, and she was very excited to get down to work. Since graduating from Oregon State University in 2016 with a bachelor's degree in fisheries and wildlife science, Kornack has taken a series of seasonal positions. This particular project, which Kornack had accepted about two weeks before, brought her to Montana for the second time. But more important, it brought her closer than ever to grizzly bears. As a U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service seasonal field assistant working on this particular project, Amber Kornack had to collect grizzly bear hair samples from trees, strands of barbed wire attached to trees, or old sign poles for genetic analysis. The project's point was to get a way to identify different grizzly individuals and help keep a viable estimate of how many bears live in the cabinet area. Part of the Rocky Mountains, the Cabinet Mountains are located in northwest Montana and the Idaho Panhandle. These mountains are widely regarded as being the wildest mountains left in the U.S., with snow-capped rocky peaks and groves of huge cedars, ridges, cold streams, and clear lakes. The Cabinet Mountains are rich in minerals and wildlife alike. There are deer, elk, moose, sheep, wolves, grizzlies, and black bears all making these mountains a natural habitat. May 17th was Amber's third day in the field, working on the project in the Cabinet Mountains. Amber Kornack was excited. And she was a hard worker, always. Always following protocol. Especially when she was alone right in the middle of nature, where anything could happen. Amber made sure to make as much noise as possible as she worked. She had a can of bear spray on her and a satellite communication device to be used in case she needed help. It was late morning, around 11am, when Amber finished collecting some hair samples from a tree and decided to go down a trail to get some more samples from some more strands of barbed wire. She stepped out into an opening and started walking down the trail. As she walked, Amber blew a whistle, clapped her hands, and stomped her feet. By doing so, she made sure any nearby animal would be alerted of her presence. There were no other sounds, except maybe for the sounds of a nearby creek. But suddenly, Amber Kornack heard something. She turned to her left in a flash, but what she saw made her stop right in her tracks. There it was, a grizzly bear, only 11 or 12 feet away from her. The animal had been completely silent. Amber had no idea how it got so close without alerting her. She took the animal in for a second. She could see it in all its mightiness, the huge body, the massive head fitted with sharp teeth, the thick fur. It was a terrifying sight, one that no one wants to encounter while alone in the middle of nowhere. The 28-year-old woman acted quickly. She turned to her right, dropped down on the ground, and crawled in a bush, hoping the animal would leave her alone. No such luck. The animal was already at her back. It lifted a paw and smacked Amber's back. Then, the bear clawed at her arm. Amber knew her only chance was to take out the bear spray and somehow managed to deploy it. The bear spray was on her belt. Amber pulled it off, got the top off, but she didn't get to deploy the spray. That's when the bear bit her. She had hoped the bear would be more interested in her backpack than anything else, but unfortunately, that wasn't the case. The animal's powerful jaws closed around the back of Amber's skull. She heard the bone crush, but Amber couldn't let herself die. She reached over with her left arm and sprayed the bear right in the face. It didn't matter that some of the spray got in her face, too. It was certainly preferable to be mauled to death by a grizzly. The animal vanished almost as quickly as it appeared, but Amber Kornack wasn't quite out of the woods yet. She was seriously injured and still alone and exposed. This was still bear country. She had to leave and get help. The woman used her satellite device to signal an emergency. She was in pain, but she knew she had to keep her cool. 
Amber grabbed a bottle of water, rinsed the spray out of her eyes, and then took a moment to think the course of her actions through. She figured she had to keep moving and get out of the moments, so that's what she did. As soon as she got up, Amber made sure to check if the bear was waiting for her. Fortunately, the trail was clear. Amber started walking the two-mile journey to her work vehicle, an unpleasant ringing in her left ear. She only realized the extent of her injuries when her hand brushed against the back of her skull. Amber felt the area was swollen. She felt a wave of panic washing over her, but she couldn't give in to the panic. She pushed forward and kept walking while also making a lot of noise. No need to run into another bear, she thought. She walked for 45 minutes. She walked fast, as if her life depended on it, because it did. Then, Amber reached her truck. She had to do one more thing before driving away to get help, so the woman wrapped her sweatshirt around her head to stop any bleeding. As she drove, she made sure not to look in the mirror. She didn't want to feel afraid. Amber Kornack drove for about three miles before she saw another vehicle. She honked her horn and started waving at the driver. The man stopped the car and agreed to drive Amber to the hospital. Luckily, they soon came upon the very ambulance that was sent once Amber had hit the emergency button on her device. After a short ride in the ambulance, Amber was life-flown to Kalispell Regional Medical Center. She had to undergo a four-hour surgery to remove bone fragments and clean wounds to her brain. With metal screws and plates placed on her skull, Amber started her journey to recovery. She had a lot of muscle damage and she lost about 95% of her hearing in her left ear, but she was alive with no severed nerves. She strongly believed the attack was just an accident and that she and the bear had just spooked each other. He was just acting as bears do, just wondering what I am. If anything, this just helped me become a better bear manager. It's just built up my knowledge in how to teach people to be bear safe. She further stated, A lot of people call it a tragic incident and I don't see it that way, Amber Kornack said. It was just an accident, I don't have any regrets. A DNA analysis later revealed that the bear that bit her was a 24 year old male grizzly, a native to the cabinet area. The whole incident sparked a small wave of controversy regarding the practice of sending workers alone in the wild, but according to Amber Kornack herself, the practice is not unusual and workers do train before going out to the field. <laughs>